You know, sometimes I feel like Rodney Dangerfield, like you're getting no respect. This is coming because of two incidents that happened this week and a comment that I saw on the, one of my last videos by Louis the Seller, who's a long time subscriber, long time commenter, and a Facebook friend. Dude's funny as hell. So we'll chop that up in just one second. If you want to learn how to get your disruptive hustle on, join Hustler University today. You know the first time that I had success as an entrepreneur outside of conventional job type stuff, there's always that curiosity and disbelief when you tell people what you do. If it's not something that fits their narrow framework of what produces income, you kind of get that side eye. My own mother did it to me for years. So what you're really telling me is, I'll tell you the whole, I'll start at the beginning. Hey, mom, I'm an entrepreneur. So what you're really telling me is you still don't have a job. That's what I got. And it doesn't really go away because unless you hit it big, you hit it really, really, really big, you don't have those problems. But if you're just, and the thing is, I know people who make six figures, seven figures, and they don't have the ostentatious lifestyle. So people are just like, really? That's what you do? I mean, seriously, it is a crack up that a person who is up to their eyeballs in debt, student loan, mortgage, house, who goes to a job that they absolutely hate, gets more respect from someone who's carved out their own economy. Carved out their own life, designed their own life. And it's just funny, I got to thinking because the two things that happened to me this week, I ran into an old friend. <laughs> I haven't seen this person. Eight years, nine years. They knew about the storage auction deal. And this is what this person said. Are you still rummaging around in people's throwaway shit? That's what he said. He doesn't watch a lot of television, and when I told him about the show Storage Wars, he had never heard of it. I know people go, what? He never heard of it. And I said, no, I don't do that. Uh, I said, I make YouTube videos. And then he's like, really? I mean, seriously, just the contempt was flowing through his voice. And I was like, and I'm just sitting there laughing at him. Now, uh, I'm going to give you the backstory about this guy. He's miserable, makes a lot of money. In and out of the country a lot. Hates what he does, but he's married to the money. And he's married to the lifestyle. And he's going to lose that job in the near future. So I don't know what the hell he's going to do. Because we're sitting there talking. And even though he's in this position, and you know he made a lot of money, and he blew a lot of money. He was like big meat, blowing money fast. He didn't really have a lot put away. And I was just like really thrown. I was blown by all this stuff. And you know, I was like, hey, you know. Shook his hand. See you later. And another person. You make YouTube videos. Does, how does that pay the bills? How is that in your damn business? <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is what she said. How does that pay the bills? It's one of those around the mulberry bushes, past the rose, bush, rose bushes, through the back door to try to get into my business. Because really what she wanted to know is, how do you do that there? But it came across as, I don't believe you, so prove it to me. And I have learned to manage my ego because the ego will get you in a lot of trouble doing stuff, trying to prove stuff that doesn't need to be proven. I was like, it works out. And I left it at that. And it's just, when you work from home, there is the, the, the amount of disrespect, this this disdain, the craziness. Even I remember years ago, I was dating someone. And this is when, wow. <laughs> Damn. <clears throat> I, I'm just like, yeah, this is my fear if you're doing this. And I'm like, yeah, it was actually years ago. I was dating someone who asked me not once, not twice. Not three times, not four times, not, but about seven times about. So you make money as a writer? Because the read is that writers don't make shit. Unless they're just, you know, famous novelists, 
or columnist or, you know, or work for a big magazine. Just, you know, you working out of your house. I mean, seriously, I mean, just and one time I said, are you trying to insult my intelligence? He says, what are you talking about? You've asked me that same damn question six different ways. I mean, what's number seven? What's number eight? Just give it to me now so I can answer it because the answer will be the same. And yes, I got a little indignant because essentially part of the problem that you can't be successful doing something like this is sometimes you think like those other people were thinking about me. You got to think about that. You think the same thing. That's why it's like, hmm, yeah, Glendon talks a good game. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know about that shit. Uh, I'm going to keep my nine to five. I'm going to keep that part time job. And I nah, just, it doesn't work for me, man. Nah, nah, nah. It doesn't work for It doesn't work. Because mentally, you can't wrap your arms around it. And until you can mentally wrap your arms around it and go, oh, that's real, it will not manifest into your life as some, being some real. Because I, I have dealt with that type of bias. And it's always when people like get laid off, then they want to talk to me and say, hey, you know, what can we do to get a, create a quick hustle <laughs> in two to three to four months? And it's like, I'm sorry, I don't have any magic jelly beans. I'm out of them this week. Check with me next week when the shipment comes in. Part of this is American culture. Because in other countries, people have to hustle not to, they have to hustle to live. They have to know the lay of the land. I mean, I'm not trying, I'm not advocating this. I'm not saying this, and I'm being really slow, and I'm going to speak very slowly when I say this, because I'm not trying to advocate it. I'm not trying to condone. I am just telling you that right now, as you watch this video, there is somebody selling their daughter or son into sexual slavery. Yes, dad and moms are pimps to feed the family. That is real. I'm not, you know, I'm not condoning it. I'm just letting you know what... The reality is of many people outside the United States. And that's a reality for some people inside the United States. They're bringing people from other countries, keeping them held captive. That's no joke. That is happening. Just to show you how hard it is in a lot of places in the world and what people are doing to make a buck. Now, if you're working from home, and you don't have to go out and deal with traffic. There's another thing that happens. Hey, could you come pick me up? Hey, could you drop me up at the airport? Hey, could you? <laughs> I mean, it's like, you don't have shit to do since you're home all day. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, I. some of the stuff, this just happens. And... I'm just doing this video to let you know, because there are many people that think working from home is this utopia. It's this gravy life. It can be for some people. I'm not going to say it's not. It can be. I call my life my cushy life at times because I work hard, but I don't work hard with the other things that other people who work hard. Like I, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm anti-traffic. I I have a stream road trade. Don't need to be in it. And anyone that's in it right now, I feel for you because this is a horrible way to live, to burn up, you know, and people and, and people adjust and people say, oh, it's not that bad because they acclimate to it. But I never acclimated to traffic. Just road rage, just you mother, you cutting you didn't give me the hand. You let someone in and they don't give you the hand, that ticks me off. I know it's childish and juvenile, but I'm like, look, I'll let you, I could have just zoomed up real quick and I, you didn't even give me the hand, the nod, oh, just, that's it. And the world is fine. <laughs> I know it's childish, but I always give a person the hand that lets me in because I know how it makes me feel, crazy as that sounds. So, with this new world we live in, you need to wrap your hands around working from home and navigating that home life because you have to create a schedule. 
you have to learn how to, you know, my problem is I had to learn how to take breaks. That's something that I'm working on because there are going to be more of you who are going to have this kind of life. There's going to be way more of you in the future to have this type of life. You're going to have to juggle a family and, you know, workspace. Because, you know, I have a spare bedroom. Well, the whole place is the office because I do videos all over the place. But you kind of get the point where you don't actually separate work from not work. So you have to kind of do some things. That's one of the reasons I take a lot of walks and I go to the gym and get that break from the work. And sometimes I just shut it all off and read books. Or I'll go Netflix crazy. I didn't know. Fringe was on Netflix until a few weeks ago. That's my show. I did watch that when that came on. I love that show. I do. I do. I do. But working from home is going to be a reality for many people. So what I'm saying is you need to prepare yourself for it because you may find yourself in that situation. It's better to dig your well before you're thirsty, R.V. McKay, than to be thrown in that situation and then having to make it work. So part of the things that you have to do is create boundaries. Big boundary I have is when I'm writing, I don't answer my phone, I leave it on and there's only a handful of people who have the right to call me in case of emergency. And I'm not trying to be an asshole, but you know, if you're in California and you have an emergency, you don't need to be calling me. There's only a handful of people that I would expect in my life to say, hey, I have an emergency and they all know to text me. Cause you know, the phone's off, text scroll across and it's a pretty good system but a lot of times I'll turn that sucker off I'll turn the phone over and that's because if I don't block out and create that boundary things just will not happen they just won't happen another thing you have to create work hours for friends and family hey I work from such and such let them know because what will happen is Things that you do out of the goodness of your heart and you kind of rearrange your schedule, it becomes an expectation. So understand, you got to really start thinking about this stuff now because I'm telling you, a lot of you, yeah, you and you and you, and especially you, you'll be doing this in a few years. You'll be doing this because as I keep saying with the disruptive economy, with the emerging technologies many of you are going to be displaced not replaced displaced that's like when you put a rock in water and the water splashes out and then you reach in and pull the rock out the water's gone the rock's gone there's less in the vessel that's what these companies are going to become they're going to get smaller and smaller and more profitable so knowing that now why don't you create one of those companies why don't you create your own economy? Do it now because it's coming. This is one of the things that you can put on that rare list of things that are, that are inevitable. Death, taxes, disruptive economy. It's, you can put it right there. It's right there next to those things because it's coming. It's coming. And you can be making your own YouTube videos talking about working from home, uh, people, just crazy stuff. Because I think for me, the thing that is the most distracting is how dismissive and marginalized people will make me because of the way I live. It, it cracks me up. And I'm just sitting there. Now, understand, it has not said, well, you know, I'm going to quit doing all this and go out and get a job. That's a scary proposition and not for the reason that you think. I don't even know what the hell I would put on the resume. I haven't had a resume. It was, it was too, it, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, when I get bored, I think I'll just sit there and try to put one up. And I was like, what the fuck would I put on there? I mean, seriously, I might be virtually unemployable. I might be because I don't know. And someone's like said, well, what if, you know, the publishing thing doesn't work out and the book stops selling? What are you going to do? I said, oh, I'll create another business. That was my, I'm like, bam. <laughs> it was immediate response. Oh, I'll create another business. Because in this space that I operate, I do a lot of research. And the little kid in me that was hustling in Adamsville, Alabama, oh my God, he's doing car. It's like, you could do this. You could. 
There are so many ways to make money now, but if you are wedded to conventional thinking, you're gonna miss them. You're gonna be like, ah. I'll give you a prime example. And it's not as good as it used to be. I made six figures off Craigslist for years. Craigslist. And people are like, Craigslist, really? Craigslist? Isn't that where the Craigslist rapist is? Well, the Craigslist rapist isn't actually on the site. That's actually another organic, carbon-based human life form that goes out and do, do some things. And understand, there's a lot of rapists who aren't on Craigslist. Maybe you're a daddy. But people look at it because it's just like, Craigslist? That, you know, incredulous sound. You can hear the incredulous tone. And Craigslist? Like, really, motherfucker? <laughs> and it's a process. It's about building a system. You can... There are people making money with Twitter. Uh, there are people making money with Vine. There are people making money with Instagram. There are people making money. I'm not talking chump change. I'm talking buy the house, pay the mortgage off, put a Porsche SUV in the garage type money. Because they have a system. They're not looking at it as, hey, this is just something fun to play with for now. No, they're, they're looking at it. I mean, and understand, there are businesses out there and there are platforms that have yet to be built that I know will benefit me and put money in my pocket. Because I am firmly in this space. And as I put out in Hustle You Orientation, I was telling people, I'm moving away. Well, I've already moved away from eBay. Last time I sold anything directly on eBay was 2006. And then I outsourced that until we shut the business down. And same thing with Amazon. I got some stuff on Amazon. But my whole thing is, and I know people will want to have this conversation, that why not use the third-party platform? For me, it's hard work, but I know that if I build this now, I start, because I, I look long-term. I don't look, I look at now, which is important. I look at tomorrow, which is important. But right now, I see what I call storefront preacher prosperity. I know it's gonna sound crazy, and I'll tell you where where I came, where I got that from. In my first store, the next guy was a storefront preacher, and I would go there and I would see him, friendly guy. Can't remember his name right now, but friendly guy. Talk to him. I see him, and the guy had an incredible amount of pride. That's one of the things I like about it, because the store, you know, a little strip mall within it was dinky. It was danky. I mean, it was clean, but it was danky. And he'd come in, he sweep, he mop the floors, he says, my flock is coming. The dude was sprinkling seeds, you understand? He's just sprinkling seeds. he mop, and I'll go by there, and I'm telling you, for a good six months, I think he had 20 people. And he told me, he was paying the rent on the place out of the pocket. He wasn't getting enough in tithes to do it. You know, he said the tithes might get the electric bill. And he said, you know what? And this is what he told me, he said, Many people say they have faith. He says, I'm walking in faith. He said, this is going to come to be. So, you know, if I have to put my whole paycheck in this, I'm putting my whole paycheck in this because this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I've been called to do. To me, he was what I call an authentic, you know, pastor, preacher person because it wasn't about money. I mean, he was seriously, you know, you ever hear anybody, you ever sit with a pastor when they start talking about what they do, their craft, and then they just start beaming and they make you feel better? He was that type of dude. And I watched this dude and after we left the plaza, he was still there. Then one day I was on my way home and sometimes I like to reminisce and I was swung by the plaza and I saw there was about, the place was standing room only. And this was maybe a year and a half. It was standing room only, place packed. A little later on, I went by there he wasn't there anymore. Then maybe three years later, I was somewhere else and I saw a church and I went by there and I saw his car. He had the same car, went by there, looked at him and said, hey, how you doing? He said, hey, how you doing? He's like, yeah, I quit my job. I'm, I am uh, being a full-time pastor. Do you understand what I just told you? You know, that that's, that's my business model. That when you have that kind of confidence, you know what you're doing. Because see, this is the thing. Everything doesn't grow fast. That, that is what is killing so many people. It is just fucking killing people. You know, I did this for two weeks. It didn't work out. I'm going to stop. I did this for a year. It didn't work out. I'm going to stop. I did it for two years. 
Sometimes you may have to bust your ass for two, three, four, five, six years to get to where you want to be. That's not, you know, that whole thing with don't work hard to work smart. Sometimes you fucking have to work hard. You just have to. So I look at that with my businesses and the things I start. I just got a handful of people right now. But if I keep making it better and I keep working on it and I keep being open to new ideas, where this will be five years from now, it's going to be better, way better. Then 10 years from now, it's going to be better. <laughs> it's going to be better because I'm sprinkling seeds now. My YouTube channel will have not done as well if I didn't sprinkle the seeds of starting putting up store talking videos and stuff 14 months before the shows came on. And understand, I didn't know the shows were coming on. I had no clue. This is to show you that sometimes when you get started and you start doing things that you can benefit because you don't know what's coming. That's why you got to be in motion and in action. But if I started this channel the same night that they came on, I would have probably made 75% less money. And they're going, why? Simple. No credibility. I had built up 14 months of social credibility, social currency. And, you know, in some uh, write-ups, people's like, Glenn Cameron, he was the first. Because it was such a long, I mean, that was like, well, maybe he heard about it. No, I didn't know about that stuff until the production company started calling me. I had no clue. I didn't even know it was in the works. And I told him during one conference call, I said, when these shows hit, it's going to be bananas. Because I know what you could potentially find in these years. You're not going to find it every day. You're not going to find it every month. Some people are not going to find something like that every year. But when you hit, you motherfucking hit. It's like... I can't describe the feeling when you get something out of a unit that is just fucking magnificent. You are sitting there, and I've been with friends when they hit, and people like, I'm doing the happy name. I mean, seriously, it's a party. So that whole mystery it factor, the, as Daryl, she said, the wow factor, is pretty powerful stuff. So understand, I am patient enough and have enough faith to for this thing to grow slowly and actually it's grown faster than I thought and that's why I do the things that I do and that's why I piss people off because what I've learned is if I'm saying something that's really pissing you off it just means we're incompatible you don't even need to watch this channel you don't even need to subscribe nothing you don't need to send me 18 emails trying to confirm your fears you just need to move the fuck on because I'm that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move the fuck up. You move the fuck on because I'm moving up. Like I'm a Jefferson. Damn, I wish I had the Jefferson t shirt. But that's how you have to look at this. You gotta satisfy immediate needs because you need to make money now. You need to do something. But you still gotta look five, six, seven years long because I, I gotta go back and change my goal board because some things have changed. But I still have a long term plan because another business model, the Waffle House model, if you just keep serving sausage and you manage your cost and you become now this is the thing Waffle House is extremely efficient organization extremely they're extremely the way the counters design how fast they can you know, go from the grill to the they're that's extremely efficient they've, they've got that stuff because if you go to any Waffle House if you notice they're all the same there's a reason that is part of their formula it's the efficiency formula. That's why they can serve the same thing over and over again. Because they, they have that efficiency. And it's not like cuisine. It's a very simple menu. But it works. And that's, you know, that's what I look at. You know, the uh, storefront pastor business model. It is a business model. Waffle House business model. That's what I look at for my business. Because I love the internet. But I'm not seduced by the promise of going from ashy to classy in 90 days. That's the thing. It's like, hey, you know, I made ninety thousand dollars, and you know, my my video, how I made, you know, sixty two thousand in fourteen months. It wasn't like sixty two thousand in a month, or it was fourteen months. And it's for the person who's reasonable. That's a more attainable, and they can wrap their mind around it a lot quicker. Because when I see someone that says, hey, I made a million dollars in ninety days, first thing in my mind is, how big is your email list? How who are you connected with? How long you been doing it with? Because notice I didn't say it's not possible. It's very possible. Like right now, if 50 Cent came out with a new product, hit YouTube, he can make a million dollars in a two, maybe 24 hours. 
because of his tribe and connections and his social status. There are people who can do it. So I wouldn't say, no, it's not possible. I would look like, why is it possible for you? What are the magic, not even magic, what are the ingredients to your formula? And it's not even magic, it's a system. What are the things that you have that I don't have that make it possible? And how can I get those things to do that? Because when I see someone that's like really successful, I start, okay, peering back the layers and looking. Give an example, Snooky. Snooky making mad money right now. And you can go back. She went to the Jersey store. She, and I will give those guys credit. They hooked up with some smart business managers that went ahead and leveraged the fuck out of that silliness. Because Snooky, I think the, I don't even know their names, but the DJ, they all elevated seriously from that show, which was about nothing. <laughs> I am not mad. You know my saying, don't hate the player, don't hate the game, learn the fucking rules so you can win. They learn the rules and they're winning. I ain't mad at them. I'm like, damn, I, actually, I think Snooki's gotten way better because I see her everywhere. And, you know, she isn't crazy. And she, well, I think, well, she's a mother now. But that's just to show you what you can build if you have the hustler's mindset. Because, I mean, you want to think about it. Snooki gave a speech at Rutgers. <laughs> Got paid like 40 G's to give a speech at Rutgers. Snooki! I ain't mad. I'm just like, spread some seeds. <laughs> so understand. Go ahead and uh, think about your business model. Think about working at home because for many of you, it's coming. All right. This is Glenn and Cameron. I'll see you on the good side.